I can do this podcast. Yay! Kosti No Thompson. In the big gift stud. I'm Olivia. And I'm Pete. And the- what episode is this? Episode 10. Yay! Yay! Our 10th anniversary special. And who are we going to interview today? Um, Claire, Claire. Gigan. Claire Gigan. Gigan. And what does she do? She's an Olympian skier. That's right. right. She's a U.S. biathlete. That's right. Yeah. We, she called in all the way from Slovenia today to Sa- talk with us. Slovenia. Yeah. We're definitely our furthest yes. guest our in most terms most of distance. Yeah. <laughs> Excited to speak with her. Absolutely. Oh, yes. How are you feeling, Jeff? Yeah, how are you guys doing? I'm feeling great. All right. No? Oh, oh yes, my daughter here, too. You're feeling great, too? Yeah. You what? guys happy that we made it to 10 episodes? Oh, my, yeah. Oh, my God, that's awesome. I never, I never expected that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we expected that yeah. either. But we're, <laughs> here we go. Guess we're just finding our groove, I think. Absolutely. You guys have any news you want to share? What's new with you guys? Peter. Okay. Um, <laughs> What was that, Pete? Anything you'd like to share? Anything new and exciting in the life of Jeff? Uh, in the life of me, um, I'm doing very well. Um, I, I, I am always happy, and uh, I am. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. This is probably going to be cut out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So we have some housekeeping coming up. Pete, you want to share what we got going on? Sure. Uh, coming up, we have uh, lots of things happening. Um, one thing that's underway right now is our annual Three Points for Strive program with the Maine Red Claws. We're really excited. This is their 10th season, and we've been involved since the very beginning, even before the team was named the Red Claws. We were on board, and um, that's sponsored by Hammond Lumber Company, so we're really um thankful for both the Red Claws and Hammond Lumber for being the title sponsor of that. As you might know, every time the main Red Claws, the NBA G League team makes a three-pointer, a donation is made right back to Strive. And that's from a corporate sponsor of Hammond Lumber Company, but also listeners and fans of the Red Claws can make a, a donation. They can sponsor a, every three-pointer. They can do um, you know everything from 10 cents to a dollar or whatever they'd like for every three-pointer made, and a donation comes back to, to Strive. They can find out more about that on our website at pslstrive.org. Yeah. In addition to that... We have, um, as we mentioned in the past couple of episodes, we have some brand new Strive gear that we just got in. So we've got some new crew neck sweatshirts and hoodies, and uh, we just got in a shipment of new Strive coffee mugs or tea or whatever you want to say. Whitney's very excited about them. She designed them. They are very nice. They are very nice. So you can come buy those here if you're looking for some holiday gifts for some FOSs, Friends of Strive. Um, and we also still have our Amazon Smile account that you can use when you're making some purchases for the holidays this year. So you can select PSL Strive as your Amazon Smile beneficiary, um, and a proceed of your purchase will come right back to Strive. As well, we have our Amazon wish list um, that has different items and things that our various programs could use and benefit from if you are interested in donating um, an actual item to Strive this year. So you can check both of those out on our website or our Facebook page as well. And as a true grassroots organization, we really appreciate everyone's support. Um, we have countless donors throughout the year, and we just uh, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be able to do that without your support. So thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, thank you. It says Yep. And we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so both Jeff and Noel today are going to give a little bio about Claire, about our guest. So you guys want to begin? Oh, yeah. All right. Claire Egan is a biathlete and cross-country skier, ordinary... Originally? Oh, sorry. It's okay. Originally from Cape Elizabeth, Maine. She started cross-country ski- skiing in middle school and went to on to become a main state champion and two times a member of the New England Junior Natural National. Na- National Team as an undergraduate student at 
Wesley. Wesley. Wesley mm-hmm. College. <coughs> she ran across country and track, and, and started the Wesley ski team after graduate in 2010. Claire spent a year at the University of the New England, no, New Hampshire, Mm -hmm. where she competed competed in Division I, cross-country outdoor track and cross-country skiing while publishing, pursuing, pursuing Mm -hmm. a master degree in linguistics. linguistics. Uh, Claire Representative 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 The U.S. Balafalon Team At the 2015 And 2016 And 2017 World Championships As well As the 2018 Winter Olympic Games. She yes. she lives in Lake Plastic, in New York. Please, uh, please welcome Claire. Claire Egan. Yay! Welcome, Claire. Oh. Nope. So, Noel, you have the first question, right? Listen. It's Ray here. Oh. Okay. Can you tell us where you are right now? Yes, right now I am in Bled, Slovenia, which is in Europe, and I am in my hotel, and I am here because I'm racing right now um, this week. Uh, here for the first World Cup of the winter for the Biathlon World Cup season. Wow. How cool is that, you guys? Cool. Isn't that awesome? You guys do some similar stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Can you tell Claire about what you do in the Special Olympics? Uh, I I do snowshoeing and I used to do skiing. Yeah. Do you do any winter sports? Oh, cool. No. 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 <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Well, that's great that you do snowshoeing and skiing. There is not very much snow here in the town, but this is a very mountainous place, and up in the mountains, there's actually quite a bit of snow, and it's very cold. Wow. Hmm. That's awesome. Uh, When did you start skiing? I started skiing when I was quite young. I don't actually remember, um, but I, I did downhill skiing with my family. Sometimes we went downhill skiing in places in Maine, like Sunday River and Sugarloaf and Shawnee Peak, and sometimes we went um, to places in New Hampshire with my, we would meet my cousins over there, and we would go downhill skiing uh, at places like Wildcat and Atatash which are near North Conway, New Hampshire. Um, So I grew up downhill skiing, and it wasn't until middle school that I actually tried cross-country skiing, Mm -hmm. um, which is what I do now. Biathlon um, is cross-country skiing and riflery. Um, And so I I did cross-country skiing at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. That's where I went to school in middle school, and we had a sports team with my school, and so I just did this school sports team, and that's how I learned to cross-country ski. That's so awesome. Did you always live in Cape Elizabeth, and, or did you move there, like, around middle school? Um, no, I always lived there my whole life, and my parents still have a house in Cape Elizabeth, so I, I love to come home to Maine as often as I can, which <laughs> is not that often, yeah, <laughs> but um, a couple times a year I, I get over to Maine. Um, Can you tell us about Biathlon? Is it really the most watched watched winter sport in Europe? Europe? 
So believe it or not, biathlon is super popular in Europe. First, I'll tell you a little bit about the sport, and then maybe you'll get an idea of why it's so uh, fun to watch. So biathlon combines cross-country skiing and target shooting with a rifle. So biathletes, like me, carry around a rifle that is basically attached to a backpack. So you're cross-country skiing with this rifle on, and it weighs 8 to 10 pounds, and it's safe because you don't have any bullets in it while you're skiing so it's not loaded you're just skiing with a carrying the rifle on your back and you cross-country ski as hard as you can um, for several kilometers so a couple miles um, and then you come into a big stadium where there's a shooting range and when you get to the shooting range that's when you come to a stop and then you take your rifle off and you point at the target and then you load your bullets into the rifle and you shoot at a target that is 50 meters away um, the target is actually five black circles and they're pretty small um, we actually shoot in two positions. We shoot in the prone position, which is lying down, and we also shoot in the standing position. And when you're shooting in the prone position, the target is about the size of an Oreo, and it's 50 meters away. Wow. And when you're in the standing position, it's closer to like a pea saucer or a CD or something like that. Um, so you have five bullets, and there's five targets. So you shoot one at a time, and when you hit the target, it turns white. But if you don't hit it, it stays black. So at the end, you look up and you see how many black circles are left, and hopefully there's none. Hopefully you've hit all your targets. But if you have not, then you, you put your rifle back on your back, you start skiing again, and in that stadium where you are, there's a penalty loop. And the penalty loop is an extra ski loop that takes about 25 seconds. So if I hit all my targets, but someone else misses one, I just ski straight out onto the course again while that person does their penalty loop in front of all the fans uh, in the stadium. And then, the, then they'll be 25 seconds behind right away. Um, so what's really exciting about biathlon is that people are skiing really hard, and that's very exciting to watch. And then they come in, and they have to be really still and do this really precise, um, difficult task that's so, sort of like putting or shooting a basketball free throw or something like that. It's, there's a lot of tension, and, and you just don't know, are they going to get it or not? Yeah. And um, so the, the, the lead can change really quickly. So let, you know, if you come in and you miss a bunch of targets, you're no longer winning the race. You can go way to the back. So um, it's, it's very exciting to watch. The lead is always changing, and it always just comes down to the very last shot, who can hit that shot, um, and then ski their heart out to the finish line. Um, so it's a very exciting sport, and yes, it is, as far as I know, the number one most popular spectator sport for, for winter sports in Europe, and that includes the live um, crowds in the stands as well as the TV audience. And the TV audience is really huge. It's, it's sort of like basketball in the winter in the U.S. where if you're, um, you know, if you're at home on a weekend or you're maybe at the airport or something and you see a TV on, you're at a bar or restaurant, you see a TV on in the wintertime in the U.S., you might see basketball. But in Europe, you're probably going to see biathlon. Wow, awesome. that was um, an amazing description. I, now I want to watch it more when the Olympics go on. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. How did you learn how to shoot? I did not learn how to shoot until I was actually 25 years old. Wow. So I was cross-country skiing for a long time, and um, basically I had a few cross-country ski teammates who also did biathlon, and um, one of their coaches offered me um, a biathlon lesson, and I found out that this person was a gold medalist in the Olympics in biathlon, and if someone who has won a gold medal in the Olympics offers to teach you something, I really don't think it matters what it is, you should say right. yes Absolutely. and take that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just 
said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I would love to learn something from you today. And um, I learned so much, and I, I really um, I liked I liked learning something new, and I thought that he was a really good teacher. So I said, I want to do more of this. This is fun. Um, and so that's that's how I started doing Baffon when I was 25. Wow. Uh, Jeff? Um, do you make friends with your competitors? That is a great question, and I'm so glad you asked. I really do, and it's one of my favorite parts about doing my sport on the international level especially um just last year in march i decided to run for the international Baffon union athletes committee yes. um and i won the election so now i'm chairing the athletes committee and we just had a meeting last night and i invited all the different athletes from all the different countries to come um and a lot of people came and so then we have people from all different countries in the world um wow. sitting in one room and trying to communicate with one another and um it, it's really fun because when we race we're competing against each other but in a setting like that we're all just athletes and we're all experiencing really similar things every day and we have a lot in common so I, I really like um, getting to, to know my competitors and at this point they're my friends. That's amazing. And that was one of our questions that we had a little later about the International Biathlon um, Union Athletes Committee. Can you tell us a little bit more mm -hmm. about what that job does? Yeah. Um, so basically there are 100 men and 100 women athletes who compete um, every weekend on the Biathlon World Cup. And as I said, there's tons of spectators, and it's really quite a big show. Um, and so it's important that in our organization, which is a big organization putting on these huge events, that athletes have a voice and um, are represented when there's big decisions being made, um, that, that athletes get to weigh in on, on what their opinion is. So um, my job um, with my three colleagues, there's there's four of us on the committee, is to make sure that that athlete voice is heard, um, and that so that involves reaching out to athletes so we can actually know what is important to them and what what their opinions are, um, and then sharing that information back with the um, staff members at the International Baffling Union. So um, for me, that means going to meetings and phone calls um, but but mostly it just means talking to talking to my fellow athletes and then like I said that's fun for me so um, I I like doing this job I take it seriously and it's been um, fun so far well, congratulations yeah that's amazing no? thanks yep. did you always w went to the Olympics did, did you always want to go want to, to the go to Olympics? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a good question. I I I was my answer is definitely yes. <laughs> um, but I think wanting to go to the Olympics, um, I guess in my mind, I think everyone wants to go to the Olympics. Maybe that's not true, but <laughs> for sure, I always wanted to go. Um, but I did not ever think that I would have the chance to go um, until 2014 when I was about 26. Um, so when I was a child, I loved watching the Olympics and all the different sports, um, but I never thought that I could go. I didn't know how to do that or I had, I had no idea what it would take, what kind of work it would take or what I would have to do to get from you know, doing my school cross-country ski team in Cape Elizabeth to going to the Olympics. Um, and I, I just kind of was going one step at a time. I liked cross-country skiing, so I kept doing it. I went to college and I did cross-country skiing. I did cross-country skiing after college. Um, but it, it really, it wasn't until I started doing biathlon and, and I had some early success um, my, my first year in biathlon, I went to the Olympic trials 
for the Sochi Olympics, the 2014 Winter Olympics, and I was not... Um, I mean, I was just trying the sport, so I was not expecting or even trying to make the team at all, Um, but I actually was quite close to making that team. And at that point, I knew, okay, if I train for four more years doing this, I'm definitely going to make that team. So it, it just went very quickly from being something that oh yeah sure i'd love to do that but i i didn't know how to do it i didn't believe it was possible to then suddenly knowing for sure i could do it um and and then i did it that's incredible Uh, wow and i think jeff it's up over to you uh tell us about what the olympics were like Um, the, let's see, the Olympics, um, you see a lot of things on TV that are really wonderful. You see all the best, most positive things, um, and I have to say that there were really wonderful parts of the Olympics, but there's so much more, um, than just people winning medals. Mm -hmm. For every person that wins a medal, there's at least a hundred who don't. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's... First of all, I was in Korea for three weeks. Wow. That's a long time. Um, so a lot happens in three weeks. And um, in Bathon, there are six events. Um, I didn't qualify for all of them, but I raced on basically the first day of competition and the last day of competition. So wow. I was really busy training the whole time um, and just, you know, sort of preparing for my next race in between those races. So it was a long time. Um, it was extremely cold. <laughs> like, yeah. It was the most extreme weather I've ever competed in in biathlon in terms of cold and wind. Yeah. Um, so I, I, am, I think my parents were really brave to be out there watching me <laughs> in the cold. Um, my family came to Korea, my, my, both my brothers and my parents, and that was... That was so great. That was the only, I think that was the only time. Yeah, that was the only time that my whole family has been at one of my international competitions. Um, and and that was really cool. I also felt like um, one thing that made the Olympics different than any other race was that not only my whole fam- immediate family was watching, but my whole extended family was watching my whole community was watching from elizabeth and from maine my whole um college community my community in like placid new york where i live now i really felt like everyone who who knew me or was a part of my life somehow was really watching and really present um in in the moment of the olympics and that was really different than a, your average biathlon race for yeah. me where <laughs> Americans are not paying attention. Right. So that was really cool. Um, I felt a lot like the Olympics were like living in a college dorm setting, yeah. which um, was something I didn't really expect. Um, so the Olympic Village was a bunch of kind of high-rise apartment buildings and so my teammates and I stayed on the 15th floor of this apartment building, and we had, um, you know, we had these kind of ID cards, and we used them to get into the dining hall and into the building, just like you would do on a college campus. And everyone was about that age too. So I, I was 30 years old when I was at the Olympics in February, and in my sport, that's normal. Um, there's a really kind of wide range of people in my sport, but the top woman in the world right now in my sport is 36 years old, and there's also Olympic gold medalists who are 22 in Pyeongchang. So there's quite a range, but I don't, I feel like I'm right in the middle of it. Um, But at the Olympics overall, I felt quite quite old um, because (laughs) a lot of the sports like, (laughs) yeah, it was funny, a lot of the sports like, um, figure skating, snowboarding, um, any of the kind of aerial sports tend to have younger people. Um, And so there were a lot of really young people, you know, like teenagers, 17-year-olds. And so that sort of also added to the kind of college campus feel. Um, What else can I tell you? Um, I... 
It was very uh, exciting to go to the opening ceremony. I think that was my favorite part, um, just because that is something that is awesome for everyone. You know, like I said, um, for everyone who wins a gold medal, there's a hundred who don't, but but I think the opening ceremony feels like a gold medal to everybody, <laughs> and it definitely did to me. So um, that was one of my one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Do you have any other specific things you want to know about about the Olympics? Um, kind of, yeah. Which one are we on? I think we're are we back to Noel. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm not this one. Yeah. No, not about the Olympics per se, but yeah. more about you. <laughs> more about you. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Yeah. You can speak five languages. What is your favorite? Oh, um, my favorite language is probably Italian Ooh. that I speak. Um, yeah, what are the other ones? I just, I, I also speak, um, well, English <laughs> <laughs> and French, Spanish, Italian, and German. Yeah. And um, I did study Korean for about a year and a half um, prior to going to the Olympics in Korea. So I, I learned a lot of Korean um but even after all that study, it was I'm still quite a beginner in Korean because it's such a hard language. Um, but I'm quite fluent in Spanish and Italian. Um, and I, I studied abroad in Italy and just really fell in love with the country and the people. Um, and it's just a fun language to speak. So uh, I think Italian is my favorite. I also have an Italian coach now, so I get to use it on a daily basis, which is really nice. And that must be how you speak with all the other athletes for the <laughs> the board. Yeah, I definitely have. Uh, I think I was able to meet a lot of athletes um, quite quickly because I could speak to them in their own language or some language that they know. Um, so, yeah, that's been very helpful in my in my work with the athletes committee. Yeah, bye. Bye, bye. Yo bio. bio says you. <laughs> Train. Train on, no, yep, 11. 11 months a year. What month do you take off? Uh, I take April off. So <laughs> our race season starts now. It just started. I have my first race on Sunday, and it will go until the very end of March. Um, so it's a very long race season. And then at the end of the winter, I'll be so tired and I'll really need to have um, some time to let my body rest and not do any working out, <laughs> just resting and recovering and eating and sleeping and going on vacation. So that's, that's what I do in yeah. April. And then it's back to work May 1st. Wow. Awesome. Jeff? Uh, do you have a pet pig? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I had a real life pet pig, but so far I just have my favorite pig friend in the world, my stuffed animal pig, Hilda. Love it. So good. What's next for Cleo? Ooh, now you're asking me the tricky question. <laughs> um... Well, I can tell you in the short term, I have a race on Thursday, so that's my immediate focus. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this whole season. I'm in really good shape. Things have been going really well with my new coach. I like him a lot. We work well together. Um, I'm well prepared for this season, so hopefully a season of success is next for me. Um, and then I am planning on retiring from Baffon at the end of the year. Um, oh my although gosh. my coach has been laying it on pretty thick, like every <laughs> single day <laughs> this year so far. Um, so we'll see news. about that. Are we breaking it here? No. Or <laughs> <laughs> you might, well, maybe, maybe you might be. We'll take it. Um, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. And then I, I'm not. I don't have any don't have any plans so um i'll have to figure that out but yeah. going one step at a time has worked for me so far in my life and i will continue to do that awesome we're always hiring here at strive yes yeah, so <laughs> feel, free to, feel free to join us yeah. if you come back to maine yeah. <laughs>
Um, cool. So now we are going to move into our uh, more quicker yeah. yeah phase of our questions, the lightning round, which we okay. have a little theme song Great. for. So, gentlemen, would you like to kick off the lightning round? Time for the time for the lightning round, lightning round, lightning round, lightning round, lightning round. Lightning round. round. Okay. <laughs> Um, if we didn't scare you away. Um, we'll th- <laughs> no, no, I want to hear it again. I want to hear it again. <laughs> uh, Jeff, you want to start? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, ski or shooting? Shooting. Skiing or shooting? Um, ooh, I'm gonna have to go with skiing. Running or skiing? So gonna have to go with skiing again. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, dry. Dry. Dry land. Dry land or turning on snow. Snow. <laughs> <laughs> Cape Elizabeth or Lake Placid. Placid. Cape Elizabeth. That is the easiest question yet. <laughs> We got some harder ones coming. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Olympics or World Cup? I'm sorry, what was the first thing? Uh, um, uh, the Olympics? Olympics or the, oh. or the World Cup? Oh, I'm going to say the World Cup. Ooh. Singing or playing the guitar? Hmm, singing. Yeah. Opening ceremony. Oh, uh, open ceremony or closing ceremony. Opening ceremony. So there's a pig themed one. <laughs> so Charlotte's Web or Papa the Pig. <laughs> Charlotte's Web or Peppa Pig. Charlotte's Web. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I knew that. Yeah, of course you did. With Wilbur. Yes. Uh, Sugar Loaf or Sunday River? Oh gosh, uh, Sugar Loaf. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Noel's been there plenty of times. Real snow or fake snow? Real snow. Okay, and here is the toughest question you're going to get all day. <laughs> Ready? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, if you could push a button, and make everyone? everyone in the world seven percent happiness happier happier but it would also place place a worldwide uh, ban 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 on all, all her hair all, all of her Hair products. Yeah. Wood. <laughs> Wait, on all what? Hair products? Hair styling hair products. Hair styling products. Uh, would you push it? Yeah. Okay. Would you push, would you push it? The button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. A million times yes. All right. Great. That was a uh, real strive original. Yep. Um, <laughs> So that was all the questions that we had written down. But Jeff or Noel, do you guys have any questions for Claire before we let her go? No. No? I think you got all your questions answered. Oh, yes. Jeff, do you have anything? No. Well, now we can say a big thank you to Claire for coming on the Strivecast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. Thank you so much for taking the time, especially during a competition week. So we really appreciate it. Oh, I, I'm. It's my pleasure to be on this Strive Cast. Thanks uh-huh. for all you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Bye bye. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. Strive Cast is brought to you by listeners like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we are back, and it is time for the question of the week. Question of the week. Question, question of, of the, the week. week. <laughs> so, Noel, what is today's question of the week? 
What is your favorite Winter Olympic sport? What is your favorite Winter Olympic sport? I'm going to go first since <laughs> I really screwed up last week's question of the week. And I am going to get it out of the way and say bobsledding. Wow. Throwing down the hammer, Pete. Jeff, what's your favorite Winter Olympic sport? Uh, my favorite... Uh, uh, my favorite... Uh, my, my favorite, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Olympic sport. What's your favorite winter, winter Olympic sport? Um, probably, um, uh, from snowballs. <laughs> it's not quite an Olympic sport yet, but I know you are very, very good at it. Yes. When I was a kid. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. My sport is snowshoeing and skiing. Good one. Okay. I like hockey. Whitney? I like figure skating. Ryan? Ryan? Hockey. <laughs> Two votes for hockey. <laughs> Ryan, do you have a favorite Winter Olympic sport? Well, I've gone snowshoeing, but no one had already taken okay. one. Okay. That's all right. Two votes for snowshoeing. Snow Two votes for hockey. One vote for bobsledding. One for figure skating. One for, figure one skating. for snowballs. <laughs> and I will also throw out biathlon. Uh, absolutely. Since after our conversation today, Shout I out feel to like Claire. I can appreciate biathlon much more. Me too. Yeah. All right, and we will be right back. All right, we are back, and now it is time for our Words of Wisdom segment. So, Pete, you want to tell us what our theme is for Words of Wisdom this week? Yes, I do. Uh, our Words of Wisdom this week are themed around how do you give back during the holiday season? No. Volunteer at the soup kitchen. It's yeah. a great way to give back during the holiday season, volunteering yeah. at the soup kitchen. Jeff? Um, uh, how to give back? Uh, um... Uh, probably, um, uh, probably like sweaters. What do you do with the sweaters? Uh, you know, probably sell them to their company. How about a clothing drive? Clothing drive. Clothing drive. That's a great idea. That's a good one. So, actually, speaking of, we are having a clothing drive upcoming here at Strive um, for part of our action club that we have. And so you, if you have any unwanted coats or winter gear that you are looking to donate, you can bring them here to Strive and we will donate them to our family in need that we give back to at the end of December. So that's a way that Strive is giving back. Yeah. Jeff, any other ways to give back during the holidays? Yeah. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you give back during the holidays? Um, probably... Um, hmm. How's your family give back? Uh, I'm, my very, uh, give back here, probably do fudge. Provide some fudge. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Spreading the, sharing the love. Through like our chocolate. friends at Patriot yeah. Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Uh, yes, that's right. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for that, guys, and we will be right back. The Strivecast is brought to you by your ad here. This is episode 10 of the Strivecast, so we think that we're big enough now to be able to have some advertisers. We are having people in the 100s listening to all of our episodes, and it grows bigger and better each week. And uh, we'd love to, to work with you to promote your brand or your product or your company. So shoot us an email at Strivecast. Shoot us. That's a biathlon joke. <laughs> shoot us an email at Strivecast at pslstrive.org, and we'd love to create a plan to work within your budget. Thanks. Thank you. Guess that means it's time to wrap I it guess up. That is time to wrap it up, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the Strivecast episode 10. Yeah, to 10. To 10. Double guys, digits. Double digits. Can you guys believe we've done 10 episodes oh. now? Oh, yes. 10 episodes. Has it been fun? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, been, it's been very fun. Do you like doing the Strivecast yeah. with us? Yeah, it's been fun with the WP and Whitney's. <laughs> and Whitney, too. Of yeah, course. that is a good reminder that we should thank Whitney, our producer, who books all of our guests. Absolutely. All the way to Slovenia. That's right. And awesome. beyond. And uh, Ryan, who is our engineer and does all the editing and sets up all our equipment and makes us. Um, 
able to be heard. Yes, thank you both so much. Um, and we'd like to give a thank you to you, our listeners, for tuning in with us for 10 whole episodes now. We can't say how much we thank you for that. A lot. Um, we we know there may not be so many of you, maybe, but we are growing each week, and so we are just really grateful for all your support. Um, please do continue to share the Strivecast wherever you can and tell your friends and family about it. Um, share it on social media and all of that. And um, we will be talking to you really soon. Anything else you guys want to say before we head out? Not really. Not really. Not really. Nice to come again. Mm. Special thanks to Claire Egan for joining us today. Thank you, Claire. You're awesome. And we will see you next week. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. PSLstrive.org slash Strivecast. Yep. Thank you.